Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. It's Jill with Under Cottonwood. I actually have a request and an order I'm gonna do. Um, I had a customer mention the other day that they wanted to see a lemon, how to paint a lemon um, tutorial. So if you can see this wreath that's in the background here, I think they had commented on that particular listing or that post where they saw this wreath and said something along the lines of like a lemon um, tutorial would be nice. So hopefully, Chris, I think it was, if you're watching, you get to see this. But then I also have a special order um, that I need to ship. So of a lemon door hanger. So I thought I would paint it live with you guys and you could kind of see um, what's going on. So first of all, when I, um, sorry, yeah. I am going to, um, oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. For my door hangers, I purchased um, Revolution plywood from Lowe's. So it's a quarter inch plywood. So if you can see this little piece, it's pretty thin. Um, it's really great because it cuts really nice with uh, my little jigsaw. And then the other side to that is too, is that it's not super heavy. So they hang well on the door and they fit in just about any space that has um, like a screen door and the regular door. So, so that's really nice, even with a bow and flowers and greenery and stuff like that. It fits really, really well. So those are good. I've seen some one that's a little bit thicker and either heavier. Um, and then, you know, it's just going to be that much wider. So um, when you cut it, this is so obviously white takes forever to paint. So I went ahead and got this actually has three coats of white on it because white is just a little challenging in itself. But um, you can see that this side is kind of more orangey and this side is lighter. So the orange side is the side that you always want to paint. So I've got the lighter side on the back. So when you're cutting in things, you want to sand um, this orangey side the best because that's going to be what your paint actually attaches to. So the next thing about that is when I am cutting my door hangers, these, this right here is a lifesaver. So this is a compass and I think I picked it up at Home Depot. But when I get ready to do, so most of the ones that I do are round. And they're usually 18 inches. So when I brought this home, it didn't have measurements on it, but I went ahead and measured out um, what I needed because obviously on this, I needed it to be nine inches so that my round is 18, if that makes sense. Um, so this stays in place really well. And then you can just trace your circle so that you can cut it out with your jigsaw. So that's really helpful. But the reason why I brought this in is because I was going to show you on these lemons and if you can see there's a watermelon one right there. I kind of brought that for you to see too. Um, this particular customer wanted, she ordered a lemon door hanger from me like this um, for someone and then wanted the exact same thing only a little bit bigger for um, like the front door versus where they were using this one at another place in the house. So she wanted this one just to be a little bit bigger. So what I did with that is since I usually this just unscrews so you can measure so like if I make a 10 inch sign I just measure it out to five and like I said my regular rounds are 18 inches so I measured this at nine so what I did with this one is to do kind of a half summit half circle lemon um I measured this out I think at like 11 because I think this is 22 inches but and then, you, so this is what you do on your wood. You just place it here and then you scroll to the side and then scroll to the other side. So that way you have a really good clean cut versus trying to like hand, um, hand draw it on. So then I was going to show you another instance, like here's one that I cut that's a watermelon that was going to be like, you have a bite taken out of it. So I just knew exactly what size I needed and I used this to create my little semicircle and then cut out this little chunk. So anyway, so there you have it. That's how I have that. You need a compass um, to do around or in this case, if you wanted to do uh, like a slice of 
slice of watermelon, slice of lemon or something. So like I said, I've already got this painted white because it takes forever to dry. So this is what I use. Now I've used all kinds of different paints. When um, the pandemic first started and going to Hobby Lobby, you couldn't just find paint because everybody and their brother was at home doing projects and everything. So I've used um, like paint from Lowe's, like all, all kinds of it. But this is my favorite craft paint. And with white, it really doesn't matter what kind you use. It's going to take multiple coats anyway. So, so like I said, the white has been painted and dried. So what I'm going to do, the easiest way to get this started. So of course I have yellow. What's this one? Canary yellow is actually what that one's called. This is going to be our little lemon seed or lemon pieces here. So I have a real fancy paint set up here. Foam plate. Um, so what I like to do to paint my lemon slices, I don't know if you can see this brush, it's rounded on both sides so it makes it really good for like lettering and a lot of different things but it also makes it really good for um, smoothing circles um, and edges and things versus like a you know, a paintbrush that was flat on both sides. So this makes it a little bit easier to kind of get something smooth. So let me make sure you can see here. First things first. So I like to start with the, again, kind of going off of this one. So you can see it's got the biggest lemon slice right in the middle. So I'm going to kind of gauge where the middle is here. And then... So I don't start right up against the edge, just kind of close to it, but not all the way to the edge. And then the same thing, I'm going to come down here a little bit. And then kind of draw my, my first little lemon slice here. And then, so you the one in the middle obviously is going to be the biggest one, and so then your slices are going to get smaller as you go. So if you get the sizing right here, the rest of it is pretty easy. I'm just going to make sure I get all the edges really good. Now, just for time's sake, I'm going to use a little bit, a little bit bigger brush to kind of get this middle part. These little lemons are just bright and cheery. Okay. So there's how that looks. First of all, so we just have a little bit of rounded edges there on the sides. So now my next slice is just on the sides. You're going to go right there. I'll get started. I guess we'll go this way first. So I'm kind of using it like a, this one's going to be straight on for me right here. So it's going to go out on the edge just about the same as the bigger one. And so to get it started, it started about the same spot in the middle too. Yellow is pretty bright, but I still paint it a couple, couple of coats also. Okay, so then I'll do 
this one. And again, I'm kind of turning it every time so that it's kind of straight on with me. This one's going not quite to the edge again. So there's those three. Pretty easy, huh? You can tell that it gets kind of smaller as you go down. So now I'll flip to this side a little bit. FYI, in case you're wondering, you always want to keep baby wipes like on hand because if you mess up, it's really easy to fix it if you have those real handy. This yellow is so bright. It's... If you um, caught my blog post I posted yesterday about the little sign I made, um, the pizza, it's actually made out of a pizza pan. Um, you'll, and it, so if you read that, you'll know that I actually had to dull down the yellow. A little bit for that project because this particular color is just so bright. It definitely lives up to the name of it, Canary. Okay, so last little slice here. Can you hear my baseball in the background? My husband's home watching baseball. I was watching baseball too earlier, but. Good old cubbies. Okay, so there you have those. It's pretty easy. So while that dries, we'll kind of work on doing the outside. So again, going back to like this little lemon one um so this particular um customer that ordered the bigger one wanted hot pink was one of the um requests and so that's actually how i got the idea to make that one because i thought it was so cute i just loved the yellow and pink together so i've already got the yellow kind of out here so now we're going to go and do the around the edge, the little yellow and pink there. So I'm going to use the same filber tip, I think is what these are called. Actually, I'm just kind of remembering it. I'm going to use the same one and just start on the end. Just kind of make our little, little dots that are going to go along the side. And I'm just kind of going as wide as my brush and leaving just enough room that the exact same thing can come back along. So it will be yellow and pink. So just leave a little bit of space as you go through here. 
And you could do polka dots, I guess. Um, you could do like some stripes around the side. You could do all kinds of things. I just kind of, this is a pretty simple way to kind of get some striping along there. about done with this one. I'll show you how it's looking. Okay. I got to the edge there. So you can see I just have so there little space in between each one because I'm going to go back and now I'm going to do the pink. So I'm just going to kind of get a brush that is about the same as what I used for my yellow size wise. Get a little of the hot pink, which it is folk art. What is it? Bright pink. So it's really cute. It's really bright. So, can you see that? Just adding that pink in between the yellow now. And if it doesn't space out perfectly, that's okay. It's close enough. I just told my husband, don't yell at the, it's like, I can, if I can hear your baseball, just, I'm going live. Don't yell at the, don't yell at the game. Something happened. Anybody know what that's like? Used to be the Chiefs for a mm -hmm. long time, yelling at the Chiefs, but now we yell for the Chiefs, thankfully. So stinking cute, 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 cute. Okay. So there we've got all the edge covered up. So now what I want to do, the yellow is just about dry, but we'll let it finish drying just a little bit. So here's how I like to kind of make, um, well, I'll just hold it up and show you. So right now you can just see the white and the yellow and it's pretty, um, oh, what do I want to say? Like, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. I'm trying to blend it so it looks a little bit more like an actual lemon. Gosh, that was, words are hard. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I want a little bit smaller brush here. So what I'm gonna do is take the yellow and then kind of do some dry brushing. So I'm just gonna dab most of it off on my paper towel here. But I want to kind of go around the edges a little bit so it kind of starts looking like the shape of a lemon a little bit but I don't want it like you know super super bright so here's what I'm kind of kind of getting at so I'm just gonna kind of go in the middle along the edges out here Kind of along the edge, I'm kind of trying to shape it like the slice here. Just 
sharp. That's the word I was looking for. It looks so sharp between white and the yellow. It needed a little something to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic there. So I'm just going to kind of do that until I, you know, just feel like there's enough of it. it kind of breaks up the contrast. See, now I'm thinking of all my words that I couldn't think of a minute ago. So in some spots you might leave a little bit more on your brush. You might dry your brush off more. And if it's not, you know, if it's never not enough, you can always add more to it. But so now can you see it's got a little, little shape there. So let's get a second coat of paint on this yellow. And really that's all it's gonna take on these with this bright yellow. It's just two coats. Just about done with that second coat here. Now I'll probably go back and add a little bit more yellow. The hot pink is really bright, so I might not have to do it, but might have to get a little bit more yellow along the edges. All right, so now it's got two coats there. So let's just take a peek at our edge. Yep, I think I'm gonna go back over those real quick. If it doesn't need it, that's good too. You don't have to worry about it, but it just looks like some of mine needed a little bit more. Like I said, the pink is so bright that it's, um, it will be fine. Two coats of yellow everywhere. So there's what we have so far. You can see kind of the, the little dry brushing of the yellow in between. I'm going to blow dry just a minute and then we're going to paint our little, do some white highlights on that and it's almost done.
this craft paint is, but it dries quickly, which is nice. Really quick. So I'm going to get a little dab of my white here. And then for this part, I'm going to use a really tiny little brush. So I got a really tiny one. I'm just kind of wanting to do a little highlights on our lemon slices and paint what's going to look like a little bit of a seed in there. So I'm just going to kind of start in the middle. Let's see. Continue to go on this side, kind of down the side, around this edge. And I'm just going to paint a little speck up there, kind of look like a, like there was a little seed in it at the top. Do that all along all of our little slices here. <clears throat> Just kind of Using the white to kind of highlight the area a little bit. I'll show you a little bit better here in just a second once I get all these done. So you can kind of see just kind of going along the edges. And I, if I pick the right side to highlight, then you got to do the right side on all of them. Okay. can see I just did the little kind of look like a seed in the middle and just a little design around the sides to kind of highlight that so it looks like the sun is shining on those so other than that our lemon is done now I will okay hang tight and I'll show you what I do to uh, just admire the pretties here for just one second Okay, so when I'm totally finished and it's nice and dry, this is what I put on all my signs and door hangers. So it's just a clear gloss. It kind of protects it from fading and elements and that sort of stuff being outside and everything. So that'll get, um, so I'll apply that later. But in the meantime, I do need to make a bow for this one. So you might as well hang with me for that too, huh? So, I'm going to just scoot our lemon over. It's going to be over here drying for the moment. And then, so here's all of our cute ribbon. Look at this one I'm really excited about. How cute is that? That's from um, a Hobby Lobby find, which if you are, um, Hobby Lobby has changed a little bit since they redid Oh, um, like they got rid of their coupon policy and things like that. They now have some really cute ribbon that's over in the sewing, which they have other ribbon, like in this, you know, whatever seasonal section it is, they have some ribbon. And then they have their section of ribbon, but they have wired ribbon along with like the gross, gross grain, gross grain, however you say it, ribbon. But some of them are wired and they're really cute. So you got to check those out. So first things first, I'm going to start with this lemon ribbon I have. Let's see, do I have my scissors? Okay, 
Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five different ribbons we're using here. I'm going to start with this one. So again, I got a, about an eight inch tail here. Pinch it together. Put it in the bow maker. Flip that fabric around so you're always seeing the pretty. You don't want it to be on this side. You always want to see the pretty side of it. And pinch it in the middle again. Flip that around. So we've gone about six there. So I'll go about six inches on this side. That goes to the middle and then we'll cut the tails off of this one. And I always use a little pin just to kind of keep the, the ribbon together so it's not everywhere. So I think I'll do, um, we'll do this one next. So this is just a little pinky green plaid kind of. So this one is just going to be slightly shorter in every way than the um, the tail and the loop too that was before it. So this one is shorter than that, and this loop is shorter than this one. Just make every layer a little bit shorter. Now it gets really full by the time you finish with it. Okay, so now. Yellow. This is a great thing. These are Sam's ribbons. If you ever go to Sam's, they almost always have seasonal ribbons. They're a really great price, and you get like these are 50, yeah, 50 yards. So I catch those anytime you can because that's a good deal. I'll tell you this lemon is going to oh gosh now I forget is it Kentucky or Tennessee ah no I don't remember I think it's Kentucky actually okay so then I'm gonna do this little that little gingham plaid one maybe So cute, it has little little edges on both sides. super cute okay and then the last one is some hot pink ribbon and it was from and this is sheer so it was from Hobby Lobby too so cute 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 you've seen me make a bow before well first of all this is the easy bow maker from Michaels super cheap and expensive like oh ten dollars I think so really good deal there and then I use a zip tie and just slide it right up under there and tie it just a little bit for the time being kind of get those Pinched on there good. And then I just kind of start fluffing it a little bit while it's still on here. So if the tail goes this way, then on the other side, I make sure the loop goes that way. So it's kind of spread it out there. So opposite there, opposite there. Do that to the next one. And then the next one, we just kind of start working it. Up from there, 
good way to get it nice and full and see your colors of your ribbon everywhere. Do the same for the other side. Oh, I got mixed up here. I don't know what I do up here. Oh, I missed one whole thing. There we go. Here, there. See a little here I have. So I need there we go. So once you kind of have that spread out a little bit, just pull that right out of there. And you can pinch it together a little bit and twist that to the back. So now for this one, since I it's not getting attached to a wreath or anything, it's just gonna get stapled on. So I don't have to use anything else here. So I'm just gonna pull that pretty tight, not all the way just yet. Just to make sure it's all spread out the way I want it to be. And everybody's going the right direction. That pink ribbon is just so stinking cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna pinch it together and I'm gonna pull that just as tight as I can. Then you just cut off a little extra. So then, isn't that super adorable? Look at that cute bow. Cute, cute, cute. Move this stuff out of the way. I'm pretty sure that my lemon is still a little damp, but she's not quite dry yet. But here's kind of what she's going to be. So the bow's going to be kind of right there on that side. So super cute, huh? It's really cute. And then, and I don't remember exactly what I said, but this one's a little bit bigger than normal. So I think it was, like I said, the customer wanted it extra big. So I think it was like 22, much over that gets hard to ship. So I think I cut it about 22 inches. So anyway, there's our bow. It's going to go right there. Of course, I will drill holes in the top of it and then um, put twine in it to hang and then go back and like I said when it's all done put this clear coat on it to protect it and everything and get her shipped and she'll be on the way so anyway hopefully you enjoyed that and learned how to paint a lemon if you do share it with me or message me or send me the picture or something so I can see um, I can see yours but otherwise thanks for hanging out with me and um, learning how to paint this lemon. Got lots of goodies. If you need something new for your door for spring and summer, I've got all kinds of stuff, so check it out. But anyway, thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Maybe.